Hey y'all, this is Megan Ashley and you are listening to the Garrett Smith Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 48 of the Garrett Smith Podcast, slowly creeping up on the milestone 50 here. Um, today we have with us Megan Ashley, and sometimes I like to say where people are calling from, and I have no idea where you're joining us from today. Where where are you calling in from? Nashville, Tennessee. Wow, that's uh, so that's starting to happen more often on this podcast, actually. Uh, but our, our last guest was coming back from Nashville and was somewhere in the middle of Mississippi when she called, and I thought, well, you, I hope you're watching the road because it'd be something to get lost in Mississippi and not know where you are if you're on the podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, um, so what's everything been like out in Nashville lately? You know, coming out of COVID, I, I was there a few weeks ago. It looked like stuff was finally picking up. Yeah, everything's feeling pretty open now. I feel like, you know, the mask, like, it's kind of like I don't wear one ever now. So, yeah, so pretty back to normal, honestly. That's good. It is getting to the point where it's like it's for a while it was weird if you walked in a room and you'd forgotten to wear one. And now it's like you're kind of weird if you walk in and you're the person wearing one. So it's I don't Absolutely. it's it's kind of a nice break. I'm, I'm kind of ready for that whole era to be behind us. Same. Absolutely. Well, so uh, musically, you know, what have you been working on? Because I was listening the other day to uh, American Summer, which, by the way, is perfect for this time of year. So this is a great time to be doing the podcast. But uh, what all have you uh, had cooking on the oven? Yes. So American Summer, we I released that back in uh, May, early May. And that's been doing really, really well. And then I am actually about to go to the studio next week to release my next single, which will come out in July, end of July, actually on my birthday. So oh, nice. um, one more song. Yeah. So one more song coming out this year for sure. And who knows what else, but I um, definitely have more stuff in the work. So. So everybody listening can know when you see the next single pop up, be sure to send a happy birthday message. That's your signal. Yes, there you go. <laughs> uh, so um, you've been working on that. And uh, how's everything been going with putting uh, your recent song out? Yeah, it's been great. So I predict hopefully by 4th of July, on the rate it's been um, streamed, that it should be at 100,000 streams, which will be my first song at 100,000 streams. So, wow. um, yeah, it's been my most successful song yet, which is great. So it's been good. That's really cool. Well, I'll actually kick things off for this episode by playing it right here at the front of the show. How's that? That sounds great. Awesome. Fishing on a Saturday night, they digging in the dirt. Daddy makes us find our own just to prove that dirt don't hurt. And when Sunday morning rolls around in the back row of Baptist Church view, preacher talking about all things we should and probably shouldn't do in this town. You're driving on a two-lane road But when it ends, you can't wait for another It's a red, white, and blue American summer Got a side drive that starts in June A gas of values forward Driving 45 some county signs killing time cause we were bored in a buggy see why the sun go down when it does go to mama's house for some sweet tea and a poor swing ain't no place i'd rather be than this town where there's fireworks after baseball games hand over hearts that poor day in july reminds us who we Country driving on a two-lane road The rain it ends, you can't wait for another It's a red, white, and blue American summer Baseball game 
a hand over our hearts That forte and two eye Remind us who we are Alan Jackson on the radio Country driving on the two-lane road The rain it ends, you can't wait for another It's a red, white, and blue A red, white, and blue American summer Driving down River Road Charlie Gucci on the American radio American Summer. So take me through your story as a musician, you know, way before you put this song out and crept up on that 100,000 stream Spotify milestone. Um, tell me kind of like influences and what got you started. Absolutely. So growing up, I mean, obviously I love country music. Um, I mean, I feel like anyone that does play country music does love it. So and um, that was all I knew growing up. And um, when I was little, I played piano and violin because I was born. I taught myself through the summer. I had nothing else to do. <laughs> and then um, I actually quit music completely, though, in high school when I played volleyball. And then after that, I was like, well, like, my brother had a guitar. And that's usually how I learned instruments because I took my brother's instruments that he never used. And I just taught myself. And so I started playing guitar in high school and then um, just kind of try to, I, I've always loved um, songwriting. So that's always been something since I was like in middle school, like I love to like look up lyrics and like listen to the story. George Strait was always my biggest influence. Being from around the San Antonio area, which is where George Strait lives and is from, he's always just a big influence in my life. Um, so I loved always looking up to all his like song lyrics and just reading them and obviously singing. That's always been a big part as well. And so in college, um, I started playing shows, college and grad school, I started playing shows to help pay for school. And that's how pretty much how I got started and then just kind of went to the next step and the next step and just wanted to keep going. So now we're here. <laughs> that's really cool. I mean, it's, it's nice how everything is cyclical because, you know, sometimes it's like, well, and then I had a setback and took me back to the beginning or I had to move regions and it was like starting all over. And it's just it's interesting, interesting how everybody reacts differently. But it sounds like you've had a pretty good trajectory in the way you've done things. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, it, it seems like that so far. So I'm thankful. So what took you from, you know, playing those shows to get get you through college and everything? What took you from that to recording? Yeah, so actually, um, one of my mom's high school friends, he was, he's a guitarist. And so growing up, I listened to his music, like she would play it because, you know, we knew him and everything. And um, I was like, hey, like, how did I get more shows? Like, I've been playing these shows and I would love to like play more and like, you know, keep like growing. And so he was like, well, I'll record um, some songs. And I was like, okay, well, I've been songwriting. So I'm going to go ahead and record, you know, an EP. And that's kind of how I got into doing that. And I just, he introduced me to some people. Um, and that's how, yeah, that's how that came about. Cool. Well, I'm actually going to throw another one of your songs in right here. And given that I'm interviewing you from Texas, uh, this the title yeah. of this song just sounds like one that's also appropriate for this time of year. Uh, so I'm going to play one called River Time. Absolutely. Got a river brew drinking my hand. This world's gone crazy. 
your songs which ones would you say have the best backstories the best backstory oh man okay so let's see that's a hard one and um, they've all just you know they've all kind of just been like okay i wrote this with whoever you know and um we released it and so i guess and there's a couple of them where we like rewrote them and stuff like that like i had maybe had it originally and i was like okay let's rewrite this and make it better or what have you um i will say though it's not a song i wrote but i do have two covers out one with aaron watson and then the other song they're both like space more like space based country um and so uh, last summer or well about we're actually going to release my ep um, somebody was like, oh, like, you should release some, like, hymns or some, like, country hymns or something like that. I was like, maybe. And I was like, well, this song I have been playing literally at all my shows, Three Wooden Crosses. I've been playing out all my shows. And I've gotten so many compliments on it where people are like, you need to record that, yada, yada. So I was like, well, I will. But if I'm going to record it, like, I want it to be, like, I got to do it justice. Like, it's got to be really good. Yeah. So I... I was like, well, it'd be kind of cool to make it duet. So um, I was like, well, who can I duet with? And I was like, well, you know, I, I'm a Texas artist, fixed generation text, and I love Texas. And so I was like, well, Aaron Watson would be kind of cool. So I literally just asked him, I was like, hey, no, no, knowing no idea what he would say, I was like, I don't even think he'll remember me, like yada, yada. And I was like, hey, like, how would you feel about recording this with me? And he's like, let's do it. And I was like, okay. Like, it was such an easy yes. Like, it was so awesome. So I'm super oh. thankful for that. And the cred, like, obviously, like, that gives you a little cred, you know, um, as an artist. Like, having someone like Aaron Watson, someone, like, I grew up listening to and, like, obviously look up to you career-wise because he's just a powerhouse. Like, he's done amazing, you know, being independent and everything. And, um I love that about him and who he is. And so, and he's even more like, you think he's a great guy, but he's like more of an incredible guy. Like the more you know him, he's just like, he just gets better. Like, so he's incredible. Um, so that was a cool backstory for me, that song, because like, I just, I just, if you would have told me that a couple of years ago, like, you know, even when I went to his shows in college, like I would have been like, that's cool. You know, like I just wouldn't expect something like that to happen. So for me, that's like a, something I'll always cherish and definitely a cool of the, like backstory behind that and I feel like the lesson is just like you don't know until you ask so that's I mean, true I like a lot of times, yeah so I feel like a lot of times people are like well it's probably not because yada yada but hey you never know so what was the pressure or nerve the anxiety and nerves like on that because not only are you doing a cover which anytime you do a cover it's kind of like oh this has to live up you know to the original and not only that but you're doing this project with somebody who is one of the best Texas artists ever to pop up on our scene. You know, you, you kind of have like a lot of factors going into that. I mean, were you nervous at all or was it, did everything just kind of flow naturally? Yeah, honestly, everything, I felt really confident about, confident about it. And, um, you know, like I said, I got so many compliments on that song and I recorded it. I recorded it uh, before we even got his part. We all did it electronically because he was, in, you know, during COVID. He was in Texas. I was in Nashville at the time, and so I heard my vocal on it, and I was like, "Wow, this is like the best I've been yet." Um, you know, I've, I have been working on my voice and like my vocals a lot. It's good, you know, between when I released my my EP and really seen that and so I felt very confident and um on how it turned out as well and so yeah so I was, honestly I was not nervous at all so I was excited to get it out though I was like oh my gosh let's go <laughs> that's so. super cool I mean you've gotten to work with some really cool people in fact um you have a song that you sang a duet with also uh, a friend of mine Brie Bagwell uh what yes. was that experience like 
Yeah, I love Bree. She's another amazing artist as well. Um, definitely, like, I look up to her because of all the hard work she puts in. But um, we ended up writing that song together, Missing Goals. And um, I drove to Austin this is when I was living in Texas. And I drove to where she was living in Austin. And um, we ended up just, like, writing this song. And I was like, hey, like, well, honestly, before even, um, like, writing this song, one of my goals when I was working on my EP, I was like, it'd be really cool to do that with someone. This is before even the idea of ever doing with Aaron Watson or anybody else. And so when we wrote this song, I was like, Hey, you're like, would you want to like sing with me on this? And she was like, sure. Why not? So we did it. And, uh, it was great. And I, you know, um, me and Bree, we like share the same birthday. We drive the same truck. And so like, I've always loved Bree and she's been, um, one of my favorite female artists in Texas. And so, um, it was really cool having her on that as well. That is really cool. I mean, she, she's one of the coolest people on the Texas music scene for sure. So that's when I, when I, I saw all these people you've worked with, I'm like, okay, this is, this is really cool. Like you've really had some good experiences with recording with people. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm definitely thankful for that as well. Well, of all the songs you've recorded, which one would you say means the most to you? Okay, which one means... Honestly, oh, that's so hard. Um, that's a very good question. I think it's a process, and, you know, I feel like every artist... Well, I mean, I guess it's a good thing when you can say the newest ones. Obviously, they all mean something to me. Um, I've, you know, tried to put a lot of hard work in all of them, but... For sure, Three Wooden Crosses in American Summer, just because Three Wooden Crosses, just the story behind it and just how powerful the song it is. It is not a song I wrote, obviously, but that is one song that's special. And then also um, American Summer, just because it was my first song, um, like original song I've released since moving to Nashville that I wrote here in Nashville. And uh, just like, I love America. And so, you know, um, that's something I'm like, I like the values that I have in it and like the growth I've seen also as an artist and a songwriter as well in the song. So. So do you go all out for 4th of July? Because over the years, I feel like I, I just like get more into that holiday every year. And I like the first thought I had whenever I first listened to that song, which, you know, I listened to it a while back, you know, before we were going to do this podcast and the album or not album cover, but the cover for the song. I was like, this just has 4th of July written all over it. Absolutely. So 4th of July is my all time favorite holiday. Um, <laughs> ever since I was a kid, it's just always been my favorite and I'm a July baby. So that might be why as well because it's America. Um, but definitely I would say like I do, but I feel like the past couple of years have been pretty like low key chill, but if I, if I had it my way, I would definitely like go all out for sure. Like that is my favorite holiday. Like I, absolutely love the fourth and love summer so everything about it yes well and parades are back this year so it's going to be even better I'd, I've got a friend of mine who you know you don't meet many people who say that's their favorite holiday but I've got to give a shout out to my buddy Kane Taylor who not only is it his favorite holiday but every year he will text me as the hot the hot dog eating contest is about to start and it's just like all right you know got to root for Joey Chestnut in America it's just like becomes such a thing every year uh, so that's, that's really cool. I've, I've not really encountered other people that really get into 4th of July like that. So that's really cool. Um, yeah. but on the music note, uh, I'm going to follow up a hard question with an even harder one. If you could film a music video to any of your songs, which one would you pick? Okay. Um, let's see. Honestly, oh, that's hard. Um, <laughs> Probably, well, honestly, American Summer, but at the same time, like, I am going to be releasing a video for that later, and um, that, just, uh, like, a little, just in the know, I definitely, um, I'm going to be pretty soon posting here, just a request for people to send in videos of, like, their summers, um, or just, like, you know, what makes their summer American, and just, like, you know, whatever, if it's fishing with friends, or, you know, fireworks, like whatever. So, and I'm going to put them all together with some other stuff that I'm recording um, with some of my friends as well. So there will be a music video for this, but that is the one I'm like, yes, like this is the song I want, you know, a video to. Because I feel like it's super like country, you know, like I feel like this is like American summer, like, you know, it's like America and you know, you can't get any more country than that. So, right. and then, <laughs> you know, getting other people to get involved in it as well. Um, 
I don't know, I just like picture like CNT, like you know how like Red Dirt Road, like that music video was. Like I, I just get that same the Chattahoochee, like definitely that's what I'm going for for sure. I I like the concept uh, that people do for music videos when people send in their own footage. It's just kind of like you're you're making it something that includes a lot of people. Plus, it just there's something authentic about it because it's everybody's experience. But that that'll be really cool. I'll be looking forward to seeing that. Yes, yes. So, hey, if you have any videos, send them in. <laughs> send them in. Um, so, speaking of videos and songs and projects, let's go ahead and throw another one in here. I'm going to let you pick which song we play this time. Okay. So, we did American Summer. We did River Time. What do... I want you to decide between Texas I've Always Known. Do the Texas song. Yes. You got to do Texas songs. Awesome. We'll play that one here. some of your favorite venues or towns to perform because you've played texas you've been out in nashville you know what are some of your favorite places to go play my favorite places to go play so nashville's great and all i love it like 
I when really first came to town, I played on Broadway a lot, which is fun because we meet people from all over. Um, obviously, I love playing in Texas. Um, I'm trying to think some. I mean, the rest big definitely is some. Of my you know, I played Dallas and San Antonio, and that's been a great venue. Um, I've also I love playing Florida. I've been playing for like a painting on Florida. Um, recently here, and so that's definitely a fun place. There's a lot of people from Texas that go there, so I know a lot of Texans there. Yeah, but I would probably say, honestly, um, gosh, one of my favorite shows I've ever played, I got to open up for Mark Wills in Kerrville at the Shalou Theater, Um, and that was great because it was just so, it was my first, like, really big show, and so many people, like, I just met so many people, and so that was a lot of fun. And they were all from, like, the Hill Country, like, Kerrville and that whole area, and so that was one of my favorite places to play, for sure. So I would say that in the Rustic. That's really cool. Rustic, I've gone to shows, the one in Houston. I've not been to the other two, but that, I always look at that stage and think, man, that'd be a fun one to play. Yeah, I, I will say, I do like to see a one over Dallas. It's a lot bigger. So, but they're both great. Cool. I need to see the one too. <laughs> so what are some of the, I mean, you've mentioned some of your upcoming projects. What are you most excited to accomplish next? Okay. In terms of accomplishing, well, like what I want to accomplish next, that's hard. I would say, obviously, just meeting more people, playing more shows, and making more fans, you know, um, being able to get my creativity, like, get that out there, like what I have in mind. Um, and then after this next single, um, that I'm going to release in July, I plan to release sometime, probably, I imagine it's going to be 2022, but a um, Texas project. So just like songs kind of based about Texas and um, just because I've written a lot um, that I have that people are like, oh, you should record that. And I was like, well, just do like a little Texas little EP together. So I'm thinking about doing that next. So that- that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. That'd be really cool. Well, um, w- sorry, I just lost my spot. See, this is Jared Johnson once said, he's like, Garrett, you've got a voice for radio. I said, yeah, well, not really. I've got an edit button for podcasts. That's that's the uh, benefit <laughs> here. Uh, found fun. my spot. Uh, where So where can people follow your shows and uh, follow you on social media if they're just now tuning in and hearing about you for the first time? Absolutely. Well, first of all, great to meet y'all. Um, great to meet you too, Garrett. And you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook. That's usually where I post all my stuff, shows, upcoming shows and all that. So Megan Ashley Music, simplest way you can spell it. Or MeganAshleyMusic.com. I have a bunch of stuff up there. Um, all the things are up there. So Awesome. All right. Yeah. So are you ready for the big three questions that I ask everybody? Yes. I'm all right. Party. Question number one, if you could collaborate with any artist out there, who would it be? Well, I'm thankful I've collaborated with some of my favorites, but I mean, I got to say George Strait. (laughs) I I, I figured early in the episode that was going to be the answer. I kind of had it like marked down, like, wait for it. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. Just like grown up on him and literally just so much, so many similarities just in life. So it's definitely George Strait. I need to start putting a running tally together because um, on that question, I feel like George, Miranda, and Dolly pop up probably more than anybody. I was like, okay, I need to just like see who's winning the contest. Um, and I also have a tally for this next one, but I want to see what your answer is first. If you could headline any venue, where would you go play? Oh, gosh. Um, that's a really good question. Honestly, I'm going to say Flores Country Store, and I know my, that might not be, like, the biggest one, but Flores, like, I grew up around Flores. I grew up going to Flores my whole life, and so it just has a special place in my heart, um, and I just love it. So I would say Flores, for sure. That's actually a really good one. I used to drive by there to go record um, when I was doing uh, recent recordings at Stone Creek Studio down in Holotus, so definitely know, oh, know all about driving uh, out there. <laughs> Matt Damon. Yeah, shout out Mac. <laughs> yeah, okay, I know him. He did my first song. That's that's crazy. Small world. So I was actually recording with Gabe Garces, but yeah, Mac was usually there and around. So yeah, the whole the whole group. Yeah, um, Gabe, he's great. 
Great folks. Well, um, that one, the running tally I usually have is between Green Hall, the Opry or Red Rocks. I feel like those are like the three most common. So when you said floors, I was like, yes, (laughs) a little variety. Yes. I low key, I don't know why I forgot, but I forgot about the Green Hall Opry for a moment. (laughs) Green Hall Opry for sure. But yes, in Texas, floors are green for sure. That's funny. Um, well, we can, we can just say that was part of the answer. Uh, the, the big finale question is what is the funniest or craziest story you can tell from your music career so far? Oh, that's hard. That's a really hard. (laughs) Oh, okay. Well, so, okay. So let's go to this. So when I opened up for Mark Will, um, it was early in the year and we were sending out emails to like open up for people and all this stuff. Well, um, Thankfully, <laughs> I had a flight already planned to go to Texas to play some shows and for the Texas Country Music Awards. And so um, I got a call the Saturday before um, the Mark Will show. And I just I woke up to this voicemail and they're like, hey, this is, you know, I forgot who it was, you know, at Shallow Theater in um, Kerrville, Texas. And they just wanted to know, like, if you're okay with barbecue before the show next weekend. Um, for Mark Wills, and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I never, like, no one ever confirmed or told us that I was opening up for Mark Wills until literally the, like, the weekend before, and I was just so, I don't know, honestly, it was the best way to find out, because it was just like, well, I was super thankful I already had a flight in Texas, um, and I was already planning to go back, you know, Texas, because I was in Nashville, I just moved to Nashville at the time, and, um, yeah, it was just wild because I was just like, could you imagine if I did not already have a flight? Like, if I had not already planned to be in Texas and, like, thank God, like, I had that day open because, or that night open because, like, all my other nights were booked up except for that night. So it was just a really cool, like, moment. Um, super thankful for that. But it was just wild because I was like, uh, that kind of would be nice to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I'm I'm big on I turn into a type A personality deluxe when it comes to nailing down my calendar and planning. So that that stuff it's always hey. like this is awesome, but it's also going to drive me nuts. <laughs> yeah, so it works out perfectly, but it was wild because I was like, "What?" <laughs> Well, the thing that had me kind of laughing is somebody who would say, "Are you okay with barbecue?" Like, when is the answer to that ever no? Exactly, exactly. And that's what they called me for. I'm like, well, I'm thankful they called me because I would have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) So that was wild, but super thankful for that moment. Well, I'd like our listeners to know if anybody ever wants to call me and ask if I'm okay with barbecue, pick up the phone and do it. I'll be ready for it. Yeah, you can just introduce me. You don't have to call. We're going to have barbecue, though. Yeah, the answer is going to be yes. Awesome. Well, uh, Megan, I appreciate you coming onto the podcast today because uh, you've got some great work out there and you're doing good stuff. And it's it, when artists like you want to be on the podcast, it's just like, OK, this is really cool to have, a cool opportunity to have. So um, everyone be sure to give Megan a follow if you're not already. Be on the lookout for new music coming out soon and videos. And speaking of music, what song should we close this thing out with? I guess since we've already played Texas, let's go ahead and do uh, Three Wedding Crosses just because it's special. I don't know. <laughs> okay. To close out with. I was low key hoping you would say that one because I'm like, okay, you know, we, it was a great backstory. Hopefully we get to play it on here. So we will definitely play that. But Megan, I appreciate it. And uh, hope you all stay good and safe out there in Nashville and uh, hope to see you soon. You as well. It was great to know you. You too. Y'all take care. A farmer and a teacher, a hooker and a preacher, riding on a midnight bus bound for Mexico. One was headed for a vacation. One for higher education And two of them were searching for lost souls That driver never ever saw the stop sign And eighteen-wheelers can't stop on a dime There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway you take when you leave this world behind you it's what
But you leave behind you in the door Well that farmer left the harvest And a home and 80 acres Faith and love were growing things In his young son's heart That teacher left her wisdom In the minds of lots of children Did her best to give them all a better start That preacher whispered, can't you see the promised land As he laid his blood-stained Bible in that hooker's hand There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway Heaven only knows It's not what you take When you leave this world behind you It's what you leave behind you when you go Bless the farmer and the teacher and the preacher Who gave this Bible to my mama Who read it to me There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway Why there's not four of them Now I guess we know what you take when you leave this world behind you It's what you leave behind you when you go